Hello. You're probably wondering what I'm doing here. After all, even though I've done my time in the classroom as student and as teacher, I'm better known as a writer, public speaker, social activist, game show host, even a speechwriter for Presidents Richard Nixon and Gerald Ford. Life has been very good to me and I'm very grateful. Like most people, I also have questions, very big questions like, how did we get here? Where are we going? Is there a meaning and purpose in life? Or are we, the universe and everything in it, merely the result of pure dumb fate and chance? For most of my life, I believe the answers to these questions are fairly straightforward. Everything that exists was created by a loving God. That includes rocks, trees, animals, people, really everything. All along I've been well aware that other people, very smart people, believe otherwise. Rather than God's handiwork, they see the universe as the product of random particle collisions and chemical reactions. And rather than regard humankind as carrying the spark of the divine, they believe we're nothing more than mud animated by lightning. Somehow, that mud found a way to grow, reproduce, swim, crawl, breathe, walk, and eventually think. I have no problem if people want to believe that sort of thing. After all, we believe in a free society. This isn't Nazi Germany. People are entitled here to believe and say whatever they want about belief in God and the development of life. At least, that's what I used to think. This is Dr. Richard von Sternberg, mild-mannered research scientist. Until 2005, he also edited a small scientific journal affiliated with the Smithsonian Institution in Washington until he published an article by this man. As a result, Dr. Sternberg quickly found himself the object of a massive campaign that smeared his reputation and came close to destroying his career. After the publication of the Meyer article, the climate changed. It moved from being chilly to being outright hostile. Shunned, yes, and discredited. What I'm asking for is, is the freedom to follow the evidence wherever it leads. What was so damning about this article? Nothing, as far as I could tell. It merely suggested that perhaps we aren't mud animated by lightning after all. Dr. Meyer argued that there are signs of intelligent design in nature. The digital code in our DNA could not have come about by accident. Instead of a cosmic mistake, he says the evidence seems to indicate that we are the product of a higher intelligence. Publishing Dr. Meyer's paper would not have been an issue if we were living in the time of Galileo or Einstein. But unfortunately for Dr. Sternberg, we live in a very different era. This is the era of Darwin, and in such an era, those who challenge the status quo seldom go unpunished. As I investigated this situation, I discovered Dr. Sternberg is far from alone. Many other scientists face similar persecution. They're losing their jobs, they can't get tenure, they're denied publication in scientific journals, and they're openly ridiculed and ostracized by their peers, all for questioning Darwin. It's the kind of thing where you just learn to keep your mouth shut. I have been told to shut up. We were accused of, of being diabolical, theocratic uh, conspirators who were trying to uh, force religion into the classroom. It isn't just scientists attacking these guys either. The media's in on it, the courts, the educational system, everyone's after them. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. After all, these guys are asking some pretty dangerous questions, suggesting that Darwinism is not only improbable, it might actually be dangerous. I should know better than to ask such questions. After all, I've been warned. On the whole, they're not scientists. Intelligent design is not a research program. And it's all propaganda. They're distracting you from what's important. As a scientist, I am pretty hostile to a rival uh, doctrine. 
The more I thought about the situation, the more I wondered why we tolerate free speech in every other area of the society, but not here. What makes this situation so different? In my experience, people who are confident in their ideas are not afraid of criticism. So that tells me the Darwinists are afraid. They're hiding something. We're so schizophrenic. We talk about things being designed and optimized. But then when you ask us, especially in public, we're all about defending neo-Darwinism. I now realize it's my duty to get the word out, to warn others before it's too late. So I'm going to begin by warning you. Feel free to watch this film if you must, and I hope you do. But you've got to know that doing so could land you in a heap of trouble. Some of you are going to lose your friends for watching this film. Some of you may even lose your jobs. In fact, if you're a scientist with any hope of a future, I suggest you leave right now. College or high school students, especially teachers, legislators, journalists, anyone else with a stake in this debate should probably leave right now as well. But if you do leave, will anyone be left to fight this battle? Anyone? Anyone?